So how did Mary Reevy come to Australia? Well, she came as a convict and it was an amazing story actually. Uh, she was convicted of horse stealing in 1790. Uh, when she was arrested, she was dressed up as a boy named James Burrow. And it wasn't until after her trial uh, under medical examination that they discovered that she was actually a girl. Uh, and so she came to Australia. Uh, she was sent uh, here for seven years uh, and she was uh, uh, came out as obviously Mary Reby on the ship and uh, she um, was then placed with a family with uh, Major uh, Francis Gross actually as a nursemaid for that family. Yeah. Now, was that as a, she was placed with the family while she was a convict? Yes, that's okay. right. So that was yeah. her job that she was given as a convict. So when was Mary emancipated? She was emancipated two years after she arrived, when she married. So Thomas Reby had uh, met her uh, down on the docks. Uh, he was uh, an employee of the East India Company. He was an Irishman. And he'd actually proposed to her a few times before she said yes, but she did say yes. And they married in 1794. And at that point she was emancipated and he was given land and they settled on the Hawkesby River and farmed there for some time. He was a successful businessman, wasn't he? He was, yes. He quickly, he started a cargo business uh, along the Hawkesbury and then later in Sydney and he became quite successful um, by the time of his death in 1811. Now, when he died, Mary took on the business. That's right, yes. So she was left with seven children and then the business as well. Uh, his business partner had actually died within months of him, so she was left with the whole thing. Uh, and she really thrived and succeeded in business herself. She had a bit of uh, experience in running the business when he was away on long trips overseas. Uh, so she knew what to do, but she managed to not just run it, she expanded it as well after his death and she bought uh, new boats and managed to uh, build more properties. What was her values? What was, what was some of the driving values for Mary? Uh, well, she had a strong Christian faith. Uh, she was a strong supporter of the Anglican Church. She was uh, part of the church uh, St Philip's in York Street and uh, St Matthew's in Windsor as well. Uh, so we know that she had a strong faith and she uh, wrote in her diary uh, about the sermons she listened to, uh, some key verses that she loved. And again, we, we have her diary at the State Library of New South Wales to be able to read today and see what she cared about. Uh, I think her values also um, involved uh, a lot of generosity as well, which came from her Christian faith. Uh, she uh, obviously made a lot of money. Uh, she was, I think she had 20,000 pounds by uh, 1816 um, and, and numbers of properties, but she was generous with that as well. And uh, she even stepped back towards the end of her life and just lived on her investments in order to be able to give to those, some of these public institutions that were emerging. Now, she wasn't just giving, she was, she was actively involved in some organisations? She was, yes. So she was one of the first governors of the Free Grammar School, which was started in Sydney in 1825, which later became Sydney Grammar. And she was involved in starting the first bank in New South Wales as well, which is now known as Westpac. Uh, and she was one of the first shareholders of that bank. Uh, Governor Macquarie was keen to start a bank for New South Wales, uh, couldn't get support from the British authorities, so decided to do it uh, privately. And uh, he and Elizabeth were two of the first shareholders and Mary was another. She was close friends with them. And so she not only uh, contributed to it, she also uh, let them use her building. Uh, so the first bank was housed in one of her buildings. Hard, hard to answer this question, I know, but is there a way of saying what her legacy was all those years ago? Mm. She, I think she's interesting for two reasons. One, she represents uh, the many emancipists who really benefited from the generosity of Lachlan and Elizabeth Macquarie. And I think also uh, we can see her legacy in the institutions that she supported uh, the way that she uh, not just made money but she contributed to the economy in Sydney, she built buildings and she supported these public institutions which were emerging at the time. Cool. Thank you. Thank really you. Appreciate it.